I made this silicone mold a few years ago. It's 13 by 20 inches or about 30 by 50 centimeters. The silicone is starting to get brittle and it's time to make a new one. It's made over a hundred parts in this silicone mold and I'm gonna take you through my process and show you how to make a two-part large silicone mold. My name is Eric Strebel. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take the outline of my vehicle and I'm gonna offset that by 10 millimeters to make this seven millimeter wide seal. The seal is seven millimeters in width and it's laser cut. This allows me to have a 360 degree seal. It does two things. It aligns the top and the bottom half of the mold and it provides a seal to prevent the resin from coming out of the mold when we put it inside the mold cavity to make our part. I call this a key seal because it keys the top and the bottom of half of the mold together and it provides a seal. I'm using three layers of relatively thick cardboard. My laser is not big enough to cut the seal in one piece, so I have to go and patch the pieces together. Once I'm done, I shellac it to seal it so that it will not absorb the silicone and I shellac the sides of my mold box as well. My mold box is made out of three quarter inch MDF and I screw it together really well with drywall screws. The last thing you want is your mold to leak, so screw it together really well. I'm also gonna use some corner blocks to reduce the amount of silicone as this requires a tremendous amount of silicone for a mold this large. Let's add the key seal to our mold. You can see I have a center line drawn down the middle of the floor and we'll flip the key seal over. I know where the middle of that is, I've marked that as well. And we'll just glue that in with a little bit of white glue and add some weights to keep it all nice and flat. Let's take the master part and apply some white glue around the flat parts of the bottom of this mold. We wanna make sure that the white glue is spread out nice and even here. This will prevent silicone from leaking under the mold and having any flash to trim off later. I have the part marked in the center and I line it up with my center line. Let's add a date and a volume so we know how much resin to use in the future. This mold requires well over five gallons, around 20 liters of silicone. I've already marked out the weight of this container so that when we place it back on the scale, when it has silicone in it, we know how much it weighs already. And I fill it up to about three or four liters right here because we want to allow room for expansion in the degassing tank. It's important to have a container that is at least twice as large as the silicone volume you're degassing. Pull a vacuum 
and then turn off the pump and let some of the air come out. When it starts to collapse, you can turn the pump back on and degas the rest of the silicone. In my case, it takes about 20 minutes to degas the silicone fully. My vacuum tank is only a three gallon vacuum tank, so I'm gonna have to do multiple batches of silicone. The first silicone batch, I pour over the entire mold. And the reason for this is so that I don't get any seam lines on my mold. That way, the next two batches, I will just pour on top of the existing silicone and I won't get any weird lines in the mold or any delaminating later on down the line in let's say six months or nine months from the silicone. So it's important to pour the silicone over the entire mold to cover it before you put the next layer on. So we'll repeat the process, pour out the next batch of silicone and we're gonna end up needing one more layer here. I like to make my silicone molds plenty thick enough so that they don't tear or anything and they last a long time. Once the silicone has cured, usually overnight, it's time to take the mold apart and make some adjustments so that we can start setting it up for the second half. Let's remove the key seal. We don't need this anymore. It's cardboard and I just pull it out and it's a throwaway part. I have a little bit of silicone that has seeped underneath the edge of the master part and I'm going through here with an X-Acto and I'm being very careful and I'm gonna trim off that little bit of silicone that has seeped underneath the part. So we don't want that. The next thing we have to do here is we want to remove any of the white glue that we used to adhere the master onto the floor of our mold before. And I'm using a little tool to scrape off that uh, white glue and I'm being real careful to clean everything up. We want to keep the master part inside the silicone. We don't want to disturb that or take it out of the mold. You want to leave that in there to create a good seal and a good bond. Now, I'm going to remove the sides of the mold and I'm going to release them and we're going to end up dropping the mold straight down. So the silicone and the master are going to fall straight down onto my table here and then this is going to give me the space that I need to make the second half of the mold, the top part of the mold. All right, let's reassemble the mold box with the silicone and the master drop down to the bottom. And you'll see we have a space at the top where the second half of the silicone mold will be molded. I'm gonna add some little vent sprues here. And these are pieces of cast resin that I taper at the end by sticking it inside of a pencil sharpener. I'm going to super glue these in place. They need to be strong enough to resist the flow of the silicone when we pour the second half of the mold. And let's add the pour sprue into the middle part here as well. Last but not least, make sure you add release agent to your silicone because we're gonna be pouring more silicone on top of this and we don't want it to stick. It's time to pour the second part of the mold and I have to do this in multiple batches as well. Just be careful so you don't knock off any of your sprues or your pour vent. Time to disassemble the mold box take the mold apart and remove the master so we can make some parts. All right, I carefully peel the two pieces apart and this is why it's important to put release agent on your first half of the silicone. Release agent is not needed anywhere else other than where there was silicone. 
because silicone only sticks to silicone. I see a lot of people put release agent on their parts, and I don't know why they do that. You just mess up the surface finish. So we've removed the master, and we now have our completed two-part, very large silicone mold. Let's reassemble the mold. It goes back together quite easily. You can see where that key seal is super handy here. It aligns and seals the mold. I place a board on the top of it that has some holes for my vents and my sprue and I add a weight just to keep everything together to resist the pressure of the resin that we pour in it. We'll add some straws for the vent areas because we're gonna tip the tool and this allows the uh, resin to flow into the straws and not all over the mold and keep things nice and clean. So let's slowly pour the resin into the funnel in the pour hole. I use a vibration uh, tool to vibrate the bubbles out of the resin while I pour to minimize the amount of bubbles in my part. And then I'm gonna untip the tool after a few minutes when the resin has flowed everywhere and we just let it cure. Time to demold and take out our part, twist out the funnel, and we'll take the mold apart and we'll have a good part. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.